Hi, my name is Danielle Goble and I'm a senior at Evansville Day School and this is my senior project. So originally we were going to go out into the community and shadow a professional in a field that we were interested in going into. Um, mine was going to be going to a company called Thoughtfire and they work with marketing strategies and I was going to work with some design aspects, but because um, that wasn't possible, um, we have a modified project. So we're working on activities that kind of teach us about the adult life and what we're going to do there. So this is my senior project. Hope you enjoy. There are four main categories to the portrait of a graduate that it kind of embody Evansville Day School and what we're all about. Entrepreneurial learner, globally minded, resilient, and balanced are the four categories. Entrepreneurial learner is really about trying new things, um, in, in the professional world. So the first thing that I learned to do was to set up a new credit card. This was my first time setting up a credit card, so that's pretty exciting. At the beginning, they ask you to pick out a design on the front of the card, which is pretty cool. And then you fill out information, and then it takes you through this whole process of um, terms and conditions and different components that go it into creating a credit card account. Um, while I was going through this, it really made me think about how responsible you have to be with it because you've got your um, monthly payments and if you don't pay those off, then you could have, end up having penalties um, like extra fees or interest rates that definitely aren't fun. And so that has been my process um, and my card should come in the next couple of days. That's pretty exciting. So one thing about globally minded is kind of thinking about your surroundings and not just thinking about your own little bubble. So I decided to research um, three charities or causes that I'd like to support um, one day. Um, I chose the charities Make-A-Wish, Feed My Starving Children, and Uncharted International. I've actually had experience with all three of these personal experience. So the Make-A-Wish Foundation is a really cool foundation where they grant wishes um, of children with critical illnesses. So the children send in wishes and then they grant them whether it be to get a puppy or build a tree house or be a policeman, um, just cool little things like that. And those things really just bring hope to that child and help them feel resilient throughout their illness. And it's just a really cool mission that they have for them. Another foundation I've had experience with is the Uncharted International Foundation. And they're about um, bringing the gospel to people who need it and have never heard it. And so they go to like different countries and are trying to further faith among people. I have got to work in their stores, um, kind of folding clothes, cleaning, cleaning the store up. And it's really cool because they sell items um, that were made by people in different countries like Myanmar and they have their picture and so it's really cool. Um, I really love their mission and um, what they're trying to accomplish there. Feed My Starving Children is another Christian non-for-profit organization and their mission is to feed the starving children both body and spirit and I just really love their mission. Um, I actually participated in a, an event that they held at our church um, whenever I was in elementary school, and it was such a memorable experience. Um, we got to fill bags of food. I still remember we would be chanting chicken, veggie, soy, rice as we filled um, the bags in that order. Um, and it was so cool because everyone was smiling because it was fun to just help these kids who needed it. Um, knowing that these food packages would be sent out around the world to help somebody. And I just really love their mission.
So another major theme at Evansville Day School is resilient. Resiliency meaning adapting to new situations and making the best of things and figuring new stuff out. I feel like we've really done with this that, especially with this project, because it was originally thought out, um, but then we had to remap it, kind of think about how we could do something special like senior projects at home. And so I feel like this is that's a really good example of resiliency. So figuring stuff out um, on my own individually for this project, I learned how to sew a ripped seam, which is something I'd never really done before. So this is my process. I hemmed the border of my um, blanket. You can see in several different places that it was a little, a little worn, a little loved, <laughs> but my mom helped me with this because she's good at um, sewing and we used a sewing machine. So what I did was I had to fold in under a little bit of um, the trim and then wrap it around the edge of the blanket so it kind of created that border that finished edge and then sewed a seam um, kind of like a seam down it it was very challenging because you have to get right on that edge to make it look good and yet keep everything folded so i actually use pins to hold everything in place and and it actually taught me a lot about patience you have to have patience when you're sewing you can't just rip through it and go really fast um, it was definitely a process that taught me that you definitely have to have attention to detail. Um, anytime I kind of strayed a little bit left or a little bit right, then it was no good and we had to kind of backtrack. But overall, it de I definitely learned some stuff um, about sewing and hemming. So this is me hemming my blanket. I had to make sure that everything was flat and that the border was tucked under properly. Um, I took out the pins as I went to get that finished edge. So this is actually an activity that I have had experience in. Um, I've worked for my cousin mowing and doing yard work and um, lawn keeping um, for him for work. Um, but whenever I was learning, there were definitely learning curves, and that's kind of what I'll talk about. So mowing the grass and doing yard work is definitely something that I have had experience in. But um, semi-recently, I have learned how to do it on a new mower, so I learned how to check the oil on that, how to put gas in, how to lower the deck, stuff like that. Um, also, weed eating was definitely kind of a more new thing for me. Um, making sure you don't cut the grass all the way down to the root is definitely a helpful tip. I will give all to you, to all you new people who are learning. <laughs> um, yeah, and I also learned that definitely don't want to hit new trees because that will take the bark off of them and kill them. <laughs> definitely helpful tips. And I would recommend wearing jeans because if you don't, it will not feel good on your legs, like everything spitting out at you and flying everywhere. So definitely some helpful tips that I've definitely learned. Being professional in an interview is very, very important and something that I've learned um, at my time at day school and in general. You always learn dress to impress, not to look the part. That, you got to make that first impression with people. Um, how you look, how your body language is, eye contact, all that good stuff. Definitely stuff to keep in mind for the interview process. So all the new people out there that don't know what to wear to an interview, you might want to take notes. Don't just wear shorts or a t-shirt or jeans. It's really nice if you have like maybe dress slacks like I have on, um, maybe a dress coat, and if you don't have that, then a collared shirt is definitely the way to go, or a nice polo. Um, shoes, too. Make sure you have nice shoes. Um, you want to dress to impress. I said that. Dress to impress. Um, and also, I mean, the outfit is definitely key, but also how you interact with the person as well. So you want to make sure that you give eye contact, make sure you're a really attentive listener, 
um, give feedback, and um, definitely a good handshake at the end. I really enjoyed doing this one. This was one where um, I got to write a letter to a healthcare professional and a personal note goes a long way for a lot of people. It's just a note that shows that somebody cares um, about what you're doing. And especially in this time where um, healthcare workers are working so hard and risking their lives for other people um, to save lives and uh, to keep families reassured. It's just a time when healthcare professionals really need some love. So it was really cool um, to get to write that. But I didn't only get to write a note. I also got to design the front of the cards. So that was really cool. So the drawing on the card was kind of inspired by how I how I feel about healthcare workers. They're not just um, people going in and going through their shift. No, they're heroes that are going in for a job that's risking their safety and their health. And um, I honestly couldn't be more thankful for them. I put um, different superhero items on the table and uh, along with a stethoscope and a mask and gloves. And it kind of shows like those are their tools and no matter if you have Thor's hammer or Captain America's shield or a doctor's stethoscope, any of those, it's saving people. And doctors, doctors are really doing that for us and they're being our heroes in this time. So it was really cool to do that. There is definitely resiliency in cleaning the bathroom, let me tell you, <laughs> but really. Um, it was um, definitely an experience. I've cleaned a bathroom before, but I made sure that I deep cleaned pretty much everything, mirror, the cabinets, the toilet, um, stuff like that. Well, I've definitely cleaned a bathroom before, but it never gets old trying to get the smudges off the mirror or the streaky lines off the mirror. Definitely fun using that Windex. Um, I had to ask Cassidy to help me get the high parts of the mirror, but that got done. Um, this is actually pretty good training to have done because in college next year, I'm sharing a bathroom with one other person and so we have to clean our own bathrooms. So I'll definitely take some of this over there. The process of finding a roommate is definitely hard, definitely something that you have to work for, but for sure a good reward whenever you find that person um, who you really want to room with. Um, I wrote this letter to my future college roommate um, talking about what type of roommate I'll be and what I'm looking for in a roommate as well. At USI, I'm going to have actually three people living in my dorm. So on in my side of the dorm, there will be me and another person. And then on the other side is called Sweet Mates, but we share the same common area. So that's pretty cool. So I kind of wrote a double letter, one to my actual roommate and one to my Sweet Mates. And I kind of just discussed that I'm really just looking for people to have fun with and maybe someone who's a little clean, um, but to make memories with, maybe to cook, maybe to draw, um, go on adventures with. Um, and I definitely cannot wait to do that. And I am for sure not a morning person. So if someone were to be really good at getting up in the mornings and wouldn't mind helping me, that would definitely be a plus because that is something I will struggle with in college. <laughs> My whole family knows it. Um, most of the time somebody has to wake me up because I'll either sleep through the alarm or might not even set one at all. <laughs> so another activity for the senior project that I tried was trying something new and failing until I get it right. 
So it may or may not be hard to believe that I could not do a cartwheel before like a month ago. I worked on it and I worked on it and you'll see the results. <laughs> So Lauren actually taught me, she's been able to do a cartwheel ever since I can remember. And so I thought, what better teacher to teach me than somebody who's had it down pat for years. So she taught me, you can see her helping, helping me up after I fell one time. She, she was definitely there to help me keep going. And it's really cool to have that support um, system whenever you're trying something new. Um, so I just definitely had to work on practice, practice, practice constantly. I had many, many fails, many that I could not fit on this page. <laughs> you can see top right, bottom left. I had a little bit of a struggle. Definitely had to work through some patience, just focus on what I was doing, kind of slow down, take it all in, practice. Practice was definitely key. I did about 100 cartwheels <laughs> or attempted cartwheels. But eventually, I got pretty, I, my, I kept my legs straight, kept my arms straight. Landing was definitely a little tricky, um, but it was definitely a fun thing to learn. Believe it or not, I did get it down. Definitely a success. So for a hobby that I wanted to show off, I picked soccer. Um, I actually have quite a few hobbies. Like I love doing art, I love painting and drawing, but I thought that um, I'd really like to do soccer because it's something I'm very passionate about. So I've been playing soccer for about 12 years now and it has been such an incredible journey. I've learned so much. I've learned about commitment and dedication to a team, um, perseverance and so much more. My soccer journey started in first grade. Um, so a cool story was my three sisters all wanted to play soccer in first grade and I didn't. So my parents were like, hey, how about you give it a try? You don't have to play next season if you don't want to. Just try it out. See how you like it. Well, it turns out I fell in love with the game ever since I was little and I didn't want to stop. And so that's kind of been my journey with it for the last 12 years. Um, it's really taught me a whole bunch, especially, especially teamwork being one of them. I've worked with a team. It's definitely created like that type of um, fun, de dedicated environment. Whenever you work with a whole bunch of people that have the same goals, it's really cool to see how you guys can grow together. It's definitely taught me a lot about commitment. I've missed some school activities and some things I'd really like to go to, but whenever you're committed to a team, it helps you helps you realize that you're supposed to be there for them um, no matter what. And I played on a travel team for um, 10 years, so that was definitely a fun experience where you got to travel all around with people. Um, Doing, doing something you love. Uh, I got to go to Disney with soccer. I got to go to North Carolina, went to Indy, St. Louis, Ohio, a place near Chicago, just really cool places. Um, and it really, um, the whole experience taught me about commitment to a team and there's definitely rewards that come with it. Juggling is definitely one of my favorite things to do with a soccer ball. Super fun and definitely challenging whenever you're sitting down. Uh, this is a really cool exercise that keeps you up on your feet and passing and moving with a teammate. Again, juggling super fun. Uh, heading is actually really fun too. I actually haven't got to do it a lot because I did get a concussion, but you know, it happens sometimes. And then doing a long ball um, with someone is really fun. I always... Love taking corner kicks.
Wow, what a journey it has been. I remember walking onto campus my first day of my freshman year and thinking, oh my goodness, it's a new school, what am I gonna do? But I felt such a family at day school and I couldn't be more thankful for all the time I got to spend with friends and family and teachers. And this senior project has really been a cool experience and kind of a testament to who day school is because no matter, uh, no matter what happens, pandemic or whatever tries to inhibit us, we still find a way to kind of come around and make it special. So thanks to all my teachers, thanks to all my friends, thanks to my parents, thanks to my family. Thank you, EDS. Peace out.